Hey, hi, Dan Thompson here, and today we're going to talk about how to connect the Akai MPK Mini keyboard into Super 8 in Reaper so that you can control the record modes with a touch of button and play back and then turn it off. Um, and also, you know, how to connect the keyboard, obviously, into Super 8. And then these knobs, how to use those to control things like um, the volume and the reverb. Um, so let's get started. So here are the key points. Super 8 is only listening for MIDI commands on channel 1, but the pads are being set on channel 10, so we need to move those to channel 1. But the keyboard and knobs are getting set already on channel 1, so we need to move those to channel 2. And then that means that any synths that we're going to use have to listen on channel 2 instead of channel 1. So we're going to make those changes. So we need to make some adjustments to the MPK Mini. And to do that, we'll need the MPK Mini program editor. So log into your Akai Pro account. Look for your registered products. Scroll down a little bit, and you'll find your keyboard. Then click on Software Downloads. You need to get the In Music Software Center. Once you download that and install it, It'll bring you to a menu, and from there you can launch your MPK Mini Program Editor. Okay, so we've got the Akai Mini Editor. The only thing I'm changing really is the pad MIDI channel is going to 1 instead of 10, and the keyboard and controls are going to channel 2. I changed the knobs to say there's Super 8 Out 1, Super 8 Out 2, Super 8 Out 3, Super 8 Out 4. The knobs are relative. I'm using these four here to change the drum volume because I have a separate drum track, uh, the dry volume, the uh, reverb volume, and then the master volume. Uh, once I have that, I want to send it to the keyboard. And I also want to save it uh, as a file, and I'll save it here to Super 8 Looper. So now that we have the Akai set up to send notes on the right channel, we're going to configure Super 8 to listen for those notes. And up here, you can see my first track uh, record is set to 36, play is set to 37. I've got select turned off, and I've got the second part of each stereo pair turned off on all of these. Likewise, over here, I've got 38 and 39 turning on the second stereo pair. I've got 40 and 41 and then 42 and 43. So these match the Akai pads. There's some other interesting things here. Uh, you've got the fade button, and you can set that to how many iterations you would like to fade out. So when you press the stop play, it will continue to play it, in this case, for two iterations and fade out. Uh, the div button will take your sample and chop it up into smaller parts and play them back, or you can record it with the div button set to, uh, to record smaller amounts. So the RDC button is interesting. It puts a delay into the recording. Up across the top, we have sync off, so it's just a freeform sampler. Uh, with sync on to the project, it uses the project BPM, and with sync on playback, it doesn't start the recording process until playback has been started on the transport. And that's how I like to use it. Uh, for the length, you can have a single measure, uh, or you can tell it how many beats. Or if we zoom out, there's the double and the half buttons, and you can set the number of measures easily there. The virtual click, I never really use. It shows a number which beat you're on, uh, and then the latch um, I never use the latch. Uh, I think it kind of gets in my way. Okay, let's take a look at the routing for Super 8. Um, you can see I've got four inputs to Super 8. I've got the record button enabled, armed for all of these all the time, and Super 8 needs to have its record button armed at all times. But obviously that will get in the way if you want to record things on top of your loop. So what I do is I set my record mode to record disable, input monitor only. I do that for Super 8 as well as the input tracks. And that will ensure that the MIDI commands get sent to Super 8 and the input tracks also get sent to Super 8. And then you can still record other stuff on top while listening to your loops. 
Now it's absolutely crucial that you set the MIDI inputs for these onto channel 2, which is where the keyboard is sending now. The pads are sending to channel 1, where Super 8 can listen to them. Each of these inputs is an instance of UHE's excellent and free triple cheese synth. And they each get routed to, in this case, the first stereo pair, the second stereo pair, uh, 3 and 4, uh, 5 and 6, and 7 and 8, up into Super 8. And then Super 8's outputs, remember it has uh, 10 outputs. I don't use the last two, which is the click and the monitor. I've got them here and they're all turned down. Its routings basically take each of the stereo pairs and routes them out to one of these output tracks over here. You'll notice I always have the parent send turned off on Super 8 as well as on each of these because I don't want Super 8 sending directly out. I want to pick them up in these output tracks and send it that way. So now I've got each of these outputs and they roll up to this instrument bus which gets routed to uh, my reverb bus and also rolls up to the main. So I can control my, my dry signal here by changing the main and I can control the reverb bus here amount and mix those. In my reverb bus I just have really Valhalla Supermassive set to one of those awesome uh, dotted eighth note up here, this track is where I control my knobs, and this is just an instance of Realearn. So each of these knobs are connected to an output track. For example, this S8 Out 1 is connected to the output track. It's a relative one type encoder. It's listening on MIDI channel 2, and it goes to the S8 out one track. And so I've got those for each of those. And then I've also got one down here uh, to control the, oh, my drum loop. I have a drum loop. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and this is my main that I just showed you and the reverb bus that I just showed you. And then a master uh, output volume. And then for my drum track, I've downloaded uh, uh, a nice drum track from Cymatic, so let's play. start the transport and see how it sounds. Count in. Good. I like it. And give it some growl in the lower octave. I can change the volume on things, bring them down. I can add more reverb in. drums up. I can start to take out tracks and they'll fade out on their own. And then I can use the master volume to fade out the drums. And that's how it's done.